What's up guys, I'm Andrew Freed from Bass Freedom and today I'm gonna to show you how to use the three finger technique. I'm gonna show you how to do it, talk about a couple bass players who have certain combos, and then give a lot of tips within it. It could also be used for accenting different beats, and there's a lot of cool variations of it. Let's first talk about how we're doing it. The three finger technique, of course, means we're going to be using the three fingers with the ring finger, the middle finger, and the index. I find that where people struggle the most is the strength of the third finger. So you need to build that up and try and intertwine it immediately. It takes time, practice, reps in order to build that strength. So even if you're sitting in front of your TV or just noodling around, try and throw in the three finger technique. So it needs to be strong. A tip for strengthening the third finger is someone once told me to just use the third and second finger. So that's the first step, strengthen that third weak finger. In my experience, when people have used the three finger technique, they mostly associate it with the gallop. The first time I ever heard the gallop was the trooper by Iron Maiden, for sure. It's been a huge talk in the bass world if Steve Harris, the bassist of Iron Maiden, even uses three fingers. Regardless of if he does or doesn't, I think he uses two. We can adapt the three finger technique to his style. So this can be used with an eighth note followed by two sixteenth notes. So the gallop is associated with that three, two, one. When people think three in music, they usually think triplets. So with triplets, this isn't a triplet, the gallop. With triplets, when we do three, two, one, I think of Les Claypool. The first time I actually ever saw the three finger technique was when I heard the song, The Toys Go Winding Down by Primus. And that is a crazy fast three finger technique. <laughs> So hard. So another thing you must be doing is just be starting on one note. Open strings, one note, only focus on the right hand. To take this to the next level, we need to really start combining these combinations into groups of four instead of just three. Billy Sheehan is one of the most famous bassists who has really made this technique known. He is a super, super technically amazing bassist when it comes to speed, tapping, finger style, all of that. He's truly incredible. Hey, Billy so I was actually fortunate enough to have him comment on one of my Instagram videos. I posted a combo, which I'm going to talk about soon. One of my combos that I kind of came up with or figured out and I really really thought it was efficient for a certain accenting and he commented on the video and mentioned how he still was an ambassador for his go-to technique. So what Billy does is the three fingers consecutively in four note groupings. What we're gonna do is take three fingers and try and make it sound even within those groups of four. This is tough and it's a brain twister too. So check this out. It has that even eighth note sound. So I'm technically going three, two, one, but that third finger, I'm trying to make as even as the first three notes. Then when it comes to the second finger, at first I want to accent that downbeat so I know where that next bar of four is. The downbeat will change every time because three and four don't match up. We need to develop that even feel over it. Oh man, it's hard. 
I've been really trying to incorporate that within my playing recently. It's it's a tough one, especially since he commented on that video. I'm trying to get those four notes even in the three finger groupings. The saving grace to his combo is that when we have three, two, and one, we are technically just doing three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, but we're trying to play them in those four bar groupings. So the four and three problem, I call it, is one of the biggest things that people struggle with with the three finger technique. It's we use three fingers and we often play in bars of four. Of course, different subdivisions, different rhythms all add up to four, but it is a tough thing when a lot of bassists play eighth notes or 16th notes completely even, and we have to keep them even when we're using three fingers. That's one of the biggest challenges. So try and get those eighth notes or 16th notes even with the three fingers. I have an exercise with the Billy combo that I like to use chromatically on my bass. So what I'm doing here is the Billy combo where I'm just going three, two, one, but in the four bar groupings, and I'm changing a string every four notes. So what this does is it really allows me to know which finger I'm hitting per string. Check this out. Three, two, one, three. So you could see how I'm just doing the three, two, one approach by ascending each string. I feel like the new string allows me to know it's a new finger too. I find that a helpful, great warm up, great strength and exercise. If you hop over to Bass Freedom over in the free lessons section, you can get the tab or transcription of some of these exercises I'm talking about. So what I just did here without mentioning was I started to incorporate the combo of notes. This is when it's next level. It really messes with your brain and you really gotta wrap your head around it. By mixing notes in with the three fingers and playing four beats with three fingers and different notes that are fretted, it's really tough. Let's talk about the combo that I'm a big ambassador for that Billy Sheehan commented on my video for. I like to involve different accents within this Sometimes I don't want that even sound. Say I want certain fingers to be stronger on certain beats than others. So my combo is three, two, one, two, one, three, two, one. Check this out. So if you heard there were certain accents in there, so in this pattern, I'm digging in and my third finger tends to be the accent. So I'm actually getting out of the three, two, one approach. This is very healthy. This is why I feel like this combo is a little bit on the tougher side because when people first learn this, they just do three, two, one. You got to get out of three, two, one land once you have the strength and the basic triplet or gallop pattern down. So now adding this three, two, one, two, we're also learning how to train our fingers to go back and forth and not just this one motion. So just try and break it down three, two, one, two. Then we're just gonna do one, three, two, one. That three is going to be accented. I find that with my heavy attack, the third finger in this combo is inevitable that it's accented. You can try and accent other ones, but this combo I'm showing you now, the way I do it is the third finger. Dun, 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 dun. Think of a song like Flight of the Bumblebee, which is a super fast classical song. I find that three, two, one, two, one, three, two, one works really well with that chromaticism. Whew, so you could get a lot of combos from that. Here's a couple extra tips that might help you out when learning this. So the traveling floating thumb technique, which I've talked about in my muting videos, this can really help just your anchor point. I like to have my thumb usually two, strings away, but when I've been searching for some speed and digging deep sometimes, I will literally put my thumb right above the string it's playing. So another tip is I love heavy attack with three finger. 
I find that the more I dig in, the more motion I put, I get some precision from that. But usually when I'm using the three finger technique, I'm digging in. A big problem people have with this, it's they start too fast. Take it slow. Find your threshold management. Figure out where is that BPM that you can play comfortably and stay there. Slowly inch it up. Don't play too fast. I get it. You want to just go for it. You can't. You got to take it slow. You have to or you won't get this technique. It has to start slow. Other people that use this is Alex Webster, N Hop in the jazz world on the upright bass. There's so many bassists that use this. Let me know if I've forgotten anyone, as I said, because I'm sure there's tons of people I don't know about or I forgot. All right, guys, that's the video for today. I really, really love this technique. It's one of my favorites, and it's something that's really, really tough to intertwine into your playing. So stay patient and definitely battle through the frustration. I promise it's worth it. If you guys want to see each concept in writing, then head to my website, bassfreedom.com, and in the free lessons, you'll be able to access this video. All right, guys, I'm out. I'll see you next time. Peace.